نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ولا على محمد ولا على سل على سيدنا ولا على محمد المبارك وسلم صل عليه صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن شاء الله we'll talk about Ramadan uh, today and things that used to be common knowledge unfortunately now um, you know are not so uh, you know even though we have so many hufas and so many scholars and and scholaresses alima and alimas alim and alimas you know it's just uh, things that used to be commonly known have become lost unfortunately uh, you know sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees as we say in english but when we look at ramadan and we look at the commands of Ramadan or the ahkam of Ramadan you know all of these are contained within six verses of Surah Baqarah starting from verse 183 until 188 uh, but they're very important thing aspects of these verses to understand uh, you know of course the verses they start off with Ya ayyuh ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam Ya a'udhu billahi shaitan rajim Ya ayyuh ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon you know, that, oh, you who believe, you know, fasting has been prescribed or fasting has been commanded or ordained upon you as it was ordained upon the previous nations, those before you. you know, so perhaps you will learn taqwa. All six of these verses were not all revealed at once. You, know, you have the first three verses and then you have the last three verses and they were revealed separately. Uh, so the first three verses, of course, starting off with the command of fasting, Yahu uh, Aminu, and then the next two verses, you know, Ayyam Ma'adudat and Shahru Ramadan Al-Ladhi Unzila Fihi Al-Quran. You know, these two verses talking about, um, you know, when you need to fast, fasting in Ramadan, and for for who who is exempted from fasting, under what conditions, and it talks about those those commands. Of these six verses, the most significant verse, of course, is verse number 186, which start, starts off with, وَإِذَا سَلَكْ عَبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ you know, Addressing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you know, that when my slaves ask you about me, I am close. You know, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ The, you know, when we look at the month of Ramadan, you know, this is not only the month of fasting, it is the month of, of prayer and supplication, it is the month of forgiveness, you know, it is the month of the emancipation from the, from the fire of hell. You know, the first days, ten, 10 days, of course, are the days of mercy, the second 10 days are the days of forgiveness, and the last 10 days are the days of the emancipation from the hell fire. You know, of course, hell is the place of you know, Allah's wrath, it is a place away from Allah's pleasure. And Jannah is Jannah because it is a place of Allah's pleasure. But, and the question here is, you know, a couple of questions. In order to understand this verse, وَإِذَا سَلَكَ عَبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبَ دَعْوَ تَدْدَعَى إِذَا دَعَان فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّكُمْ يَرُشُدُونَ Again, addressing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that when my servants or when my slaves ask you about me, I am close. You know, I respond to their supplications when they call upon me. You know, 
So they should also respond to, or, or, or he or the servant should respond to me, you know, and should believe in me so that he will be rightly guided or on the straight path. If we look at this verse, you know, you know, where Allah Subhanahu says that he responds to the supplications of his slaves, and we look at the condition of the Ummah today, you know, of course Allah Subhanahu says that, you know, I am close to, to my slave and, and I respond to his call. When, whenever he calls, I respond. But again, when we look at the Ummah today, we don't see a response. You look at the Ummah today and everybody is making supplication. Everybody is praying to Allah. You know, Allah help us, you know, do this and do this and that. And no response. Yeah. So the question is why? Because we know that Allah's promise is true. You know, there is no doubt in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. You know, we are not like those people who say that it is possible for Allah to tell a lie. You know, anyone who thinks that, you know, has left Islam. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran himself, he says, وَقَوْلُهُ الْحَقِّ That whatever he says is the truth, period. You know, there's no need to check uh, anything. If he says it, that's it, period. And so here he's saying that he is close to his slave and that he responds to his slave whenever his slave calls upon him. And yet when we look at the Ummah today, everybody is making supplication. You know, you have, you know, like live feed from the Haramain and you have the Imams of the Haramain, Sudesh and Shareem and, and all the ones in Medina Munawara, you know, making dua and crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have, you know, uh, Mawlana Sahib everywhere making dua and, and nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. So now the question is why? And in order to understand the significance of this verse, which is again the most significant verse of the six, we have to understand the difference in the revelation. Yeah. Because if you look at the beginning of, of the revelation, or the, big, or the first batch of revelation, those first three verses, which start off with, you know, that, oh, you who believe fasting has been commanded upon you or ordained for you as it was prescribed or ordained on those before you. But when we look at, when we look at the way that we fast today, it is not the way that the previous nations fasted. You know, among the previous nations, you know, they would break their fast at Maghrib. And if any, at any point after that, they felt they went to sleep, when they woke up, the fasting had started. So literally, when they went to sleep, the fasting started. So they could not, you know, and, and to understand this, you know, let's say, you know, uh, Maghrib time starts at eight. So somebody, they, they eat and stuff at eight, you know, they break their fast, you know, and then 10 o'clock, they go to sleep. Two o'clock in the morning, they wake up. Fajr doesn't start till six in the morning, but at two o'clock, their fasting has started. This is the way the previous nations were ordered to fast. But this is not the order for us. You know, we start our fasting when? After Suhur. So at dawn. And it continues till Maghrib. And for us, you know, the night is, is free. Eat, drink, or whatever. You know, so what's the difference? And why the difference? So if we look at the difference, you know, when these first three verses were revealed and the command, and this is the second year of Hijri, so now the Muslims are fasting. If you look at the shine and nuzul of the last three verses, then, or, or the reason behind the revelation of the last three verses, we see that Omar, radiallahu one night after, you know, he broke, he broke his fast, he went, he made Isha, and he comes home. And you know, after making Marah, he makes Isha, he comes home to, to, the, uh, to his wife. His wife has already uh, fallen asleep She wakes up and he wants to fulfill his desire and she says that I'm fasting, you know, I fell asleep so my fasting has started. He doesn't stop. And the next day now he's remorseful. So he comes running to Rasulullah so I'm saying I have destroyed myself. And he tells Rasulullah so what has happened. 
Rasulullah Sallallahu remained silent. Because if Rasulullah Sallallahu had said something to Omar at that time, saying that, oh no, you know, just, you know, you're good, no problem, then that would have simply been for Omar. But Rasulullah Sallallahu knows that this is Omar and he is the one who has come to him. He also knows how many others have done the same thing but have not said anything. And if something doesn't change, how many more will do the same thing? And so he's silent and, then the, and he knows the revelation is to come. So now the revelation comes, which makes it a mercy upon the whole ummah. Because Allah SWT starts off with this verse and then the next verse is وَهِلَّ لَكُمْ إِلَيْلَةِ السَّيَامِ you know, that lawful or permissible for you during the nights of fasting. And the verse goes on, one, verse number 187, you know. And that's where Allah SWT talks about the white thread of, uh, of, the, of the horizon, you know, as compared to the black thread. And when, when the fasting starts for the believers, for this ummah, is after suhoor. Yeah. And so suhoor becomes the sunnah of Rasulullah. So if you, if you look at this now, if you look at you know, the reason for the revelation, when Umar did something, where did he go? He immediately goes to Rasulullah And then Allah SWT says that I am close. And even if I don't look at this aspect of it, if I simply look at the verse itself, وَإِذَا سَلَكَ عِبَادِي when my slaves come to you and ask you, when my slaves come and ask you about me, I am close. You know, when in language is paired with then. When this, then that. You know, so much so that you don't even have to say the then. then. You know, a simple example of this is like a mother talking to her child. And she says to the child, you know, when you finish your food, I'll give you candy. Hmm. You know, the then is understood that when you finish your food, then I will give you candy. Hmm. So the second part is conditional on the first. When you do this, then this will happen. Uh, so here, Allah SWT is telling us that when you go to the Rasul وسلم, when you go to my beloved وسلم, then I am close to you. You know, you know, when my slaves ask you about me, I am close. In reality, when my slaves ask you about me, then I am close. Ujibu da'wa taddai, Ujibu da'wa taddai idha da'an. I respond to their supplication when they call upon me. When does he respond? When we go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we make him our wasila, when we make him our intercessor, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to us. You know, this is you know, if we look even through the Qur'an, you know, Rasulullah is the wasila, you know, of everyone. He is rahmatul alameen to all of creation. He is the wasila of not only general mankind, but he is also the wasila to the prophets. You know, Adam al-Islam wasn't forgiven until he gave the wasila of Rasulullah uh, You know, if you look at the you know, Harut and Marut, when they committed the sin, what did they do? They had to go to the Prophet at that time. You know, when we look at the story of, of Yusuf al -Islam, you know, the, the brothers of Yusuf, when they wanted to be forgiven, what did they do? You know, they go, they ask forgiveness, uh, they ask Yusuf al -Islam to ask for their forgiveness, and they go to their father, who is the Prophet, and they ask him to ask for their forgiveness. And in the last part of that verse, Allah SWT says, what? He says that, you know, that the slave should obey him, should respond to him, and that 
he should believe in him. You know? So how do we respond to Allah? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us? You know? You know, in Surah Nisa, verse, Surah number 4, verse number 64, what does he say? You know, he says, وَمَا رَسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيَتَعَى بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ He says, we have not sent a messenger except that they should be obeyed بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ by the will of Allah. Meaning that it is the will of Allah that the messenger should be obeyed. And then he continues on. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذَّ لَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولَ لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّابَ رَحِيمًا and if when they had wronged their own souls, they had come to you, Ja'uka, come to you, O my beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fastaghfirullah, and ask for Allah's forgiveness. Wastaghfirullahum ar-Rasulu, and the messenger had asked for their forgiveness. La wajadullah tawwab ar-Rahim, and then, and only then, would they find Allah forgiving and merciful. Interesting point in this, this verse as well. You know, one is that even if we look at the history of the verse, you know, that this verse is not limited to the time of Rasulullah. This verse continues on even after you know, the fulfillment of his mission. You know, we see after his wafat, you know, every mufassir, every traditional and classical mufassir mentions the story of Sayyidina Ali Karamallah that three days after Rasulullah had been placed in his rawdah, you know, in his tomb, that, you know, Ali Radhiallahu was there and the Bedouin came and he said, and he recites this verse and he says that I have come to ask for Allah's forgiveness. And then Ali Radhiallahu hears Rasulullah saying that, tell him that Allah has forgiven him. And the story of Utabi. Uh, who, was a, who was a colleague of Imam Bukhari. You know, and there are people who try to uh, minimize his significance by saying he was this and that, but the fact is that the Mufassir, uh, that those who have been the, uh, the uh, scholars of the, of the, of the Quran, who have ex the classical scholars, have included him, cl included his narration. And this is like 200 years after Rasulullah where the Bedouin comes and he asks for the forgiveness and he sees the Rasulullah in, in a dream, Utabi does, telling him to go and tell the Bedouin that Allah has forgiven him. But even if we don't know this, if we look at the verse itself, That if when they had wronged their own souls, they had come to you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and ask for Allah's forgiveness. Technically, it should have been, and you had asked for their forgiveness. But Allah SWT doesn't say this. He says, وَاسْتَغْفِرُ Rasul," And the Messenger had asked for their forgiveness. You know, to emphasize that this point, that this verse is valid as long as Rasulullah SAW is Rasul. So, so long as he is the Rasul, the verse is valid. So my question is, who is the Rasul today? Other than Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we have left the wasila of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi when we have become so arrogant that we say, oh no, we can ask Allah directly. We don't need a Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then we see the condition of the Ummah today. So much so that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has had our worship places closed. He does not need us. We need Him. And we see this punishment of His that He even closes our worship places. You're not even, we don't even, we're not even allowed to go to the worship places. Because we have left His beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so He has left us. And if we can't understand that this today, that we need, we need to go back to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to make sure that we, he, that we understand He is our wasila, that He is our intercessor, He is the mediator, He is the only way for us to get close to Allah, He is the only way to even know Allah. Hmm? If we don't understand that today, 
then we will be forced to understand that in the hereafter. But there it won't do us any good. You know, the hadith is in Sayyid Bukhari. On the day of judgment, what will happen? You know, when, when the condition of everybody will be so miserable. You know, it's like the sun sitting on top of our heads. Uh, just misery. And nothing's happening. The judgment doesn't even begin. Nothing. To the extent that everybody's so miserable, they say anything is better than this. And where will they go? And of course, in the hadith, initially, where does everybody go? Everybody goes to Adam al-Islam. And he says, Idhabu ila ghayri, this is not for me, go to someone else. And then they'll go to Nuh al-Islam. And then they'll go to uh, Ibrahim al-Islam. And then Musa al-Islam. And then Isa al-Islam. And then Isa al-Islam will bring them where? He will bring them to Rasulullah so who will say what? He will say, Ana laha, I am for this. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anybody to ask him to begin the judgment. But he will have this whole process go through. So if we didn't understand in this world that we have to ask the messenger, that we have to go to the Rasul so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to us, that is the only way he will respond to us. Then see it now. You know, all of these people who say, oh, you know, asking from the Rasulullah says, is shirk, this is haram, this is bid'ah. You know, even they will be going and asking from him. Everybody will go. All of the prophets, all of mankind, all of jinn kind, everybody. Mm -hmm. So if we expect to make our situation better, then we need to go back to Rasulullah Otherwise, we can go through this whole month and gain nothing. No mercy, no forgiveness, no emancipation from the fire. I mean, this is time for us to understand this. And this is the month of Allah's mercy, and if we don't go to His mercy, if we don't go to Rasulullah, then how, how do we expect to get, make our situation any better? Yeah, I mean, again, you know, everyone is making dua. Yeah. And no response. Because again, we have forgotten his Habib, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now we say, oh, you know, to make to say that he is a wasila is shirk. Yeah, we have created, we, you know, again, our arrogance is so much. We think we don't need him to go to Allah. Oh, we have the Quran. And we forget who is the Quran. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala. Forgive us and make us understand, uh, and you know, and allow us to be worthy to even go to His Habib, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidin wa ala Muhammad wa ala ala salli ala Sayyidin wa ala Muhammad wa ala Sayyidin wa ala Ya Allah, guide us and fill our hearts with your love and the true love of your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, allow us to be worthy to go to him and ask him for, uh, for, our, for our forgiveness and, and so that you may forgive us and allow us to understand or at least to get a glimpse of his status and the status, status of his household, his family and his companions and all of those whom you love uh, and make this Ramadan a successful Ramadan for us that we gain understanding uh, and we come back to to you and your messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khulqihi muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatihi ya rahmir rahimin